Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new lesson we are going to introduce the NG model directive. As we have seen on our previous lesson, whenever we add to our application root module the forms module, then we are going to be activating template driven forms in our application. This means that Angular is going to apply an NG form directive to every form element in the page. Now we need to tell to the ng form directive what are the form controls inside the form element. We can do so by marking each of the controls that we want to link to the form with the Angular ng model directive. Let's go ahead and let's apply this directive here to each of the form controls. So if you don't apply the ng model directive to a form control, the form control will not be linked to the ng form directive. This means that Angular will not be able to track the value that you are typing in the input box or any other type of form control. And this also means that Angular will not be able to validate that value. And those are the two features that we are trying to implement using Angular forms. Now that we have linked these two controls to the ng form directive, let's see what are the values that we are getting printed out to the console here on our login method. Notice that here we have passed the ng form directive here to the login method. Usually you want to pass directly either the value, the validity state, etc. We usually don't pass the whole directive here to our component controller. I have just done this in order to be able to print out the multiple values to the console. Let's now see what the effect of ng model is in our program. We are going to switch to a larger window and we are going to see that we get here an error in the console. So what is going on here? It says that all the form controls that we add to a form need to have a name specifically set on the template. So if we go back here to our template, we are going to notice that even though the email field currently has a name, the name email, we can see that the password field does not have a name yet. Now we are going to be adding here a name. We are going to call this the password field and we are going to hit command S and we are going to have our application reloaded. So as we can see, this time around, everything is working as expected. Now let's go ahead and let's type in here some values in our form. Let's type in a password and let's now click on login. So before this was printing out to the console an empty object because the input controls were not binded to the edgy form directive. Now, if we click on login, we're going to see that we have a couple of values printed out to the screen. We have the value of the email field and of the password. So now these controls are linked to the ng form directive. The ng form directive knows the values of each of the input fields every time that we change them. For example, if I now change here the password to another value and I change here the value of the email and I hit login again, the new values are going to be automatically made available to the ng form directive. We can see here that both new values are available. So how does this work exactly? It looks like there is a little bit of magic going on. Let's make sure that we understand everything that is going on in this template. So if we go back here to our component, we're going to see that the ng model directive is applied to each of the inputs. Now the ng model directive is going to bind to the input and it's going to track any events applied to the input, such as for example, key down, key up events, etc. After each of those events, ng model is going to gather the value of the input. So this is going to happen after every Angular change detection cycle. To make sure that we understand what is going on, we're going to print out here in the template, just below the form, the current form value. Let's then create here an auxiliary div. We're going to add it here, a CSS class that we have prepared before, form val. And inside it, we are going to be accessing here on the interpolation template expression, the login form directive. So this is the ng form directive applied to our form. And from here, we're going to be accessing the value property. 
In order for this to get printed out in a readable way to the screen, let's go ahead and let's apply the built-in Angular JSON pipe. Now let's save our file, let's switch here to a larger window and see how this works. So as we can see, we already have here the initial value of the form, which corresponds here to the two empty fields. Now let's go ahead and click in one of the fields and let's start typing and see what happens. So as we can see, as we type, the value of the form is getting immediately updated with each keystroke. So this means that the ng model directive in each of the controls is binding to the control and is registering event listeners for important events such as the key up event in order to track the value of the form field. The ng form directive applied to the form is then going to access each of the individual ng model directives and from there it's going to build a full value object corresponding to the complete value of the form. So if you click here on login, this is why we can print out here an object to the screen containing all the values of the form. ng model tracks the value of each input control via event handlers and ng form is going to access the ng model applied to each of the controls and from there build a complete form value object. In order to prove that it's indeed the ng model directive that is tracking the value here of the form field, let's switch back here to our workspace and let's try to interact with the ng model directive directly, just like we did here with ng form. We are going to see that it's indeed ng model that is doing the tracking of the input values and providing that value here to ng form. So in order to interact directly with the ng model directive, we're going to create here a new template variable. We're going to call it simply email and we are going to assign it to the ng model value exported by the ng model directive. So the export has the same name as the directive. This is a common Angular convention. We can do the same also here for the password field. So let's go ahead and define here a password template variable and let's export here ng model and assign it here to the password template variable. So now we have a reference to each of the ng model directives applied to each of the form controls. So instead of printing out to the screen the complete value of the form, let's go ahead and let's access here the email ng model reference. And here with autocompletion, we can see that we can access the value of the email field. Let's go ahead and let's do here some string concatenation. Let's add a space and let's now access here the password value. Let's now try this out. We're going to switch here to a larger window and we're going to start typing here some value on the email field. And as you can see, this email is getting printed out here to the bottom of our form. If we type in here a password, we're going to see that the password is also getting printed out with a space between the two values. So this proves that it's indeed the ng model directive that is tracking the value of each form field. ng form will interact with each of the ng model directives in order to retrieve the value of the corresponding field and also its validity state. So that is how ng form can know all the values and state of all the fields contained inside it as long as each of the fields has an ng model directive applied to it. And with this, we now know exactly how the ng model and the ng form directives work and how they interact with each other. In the next couple of lessons, we're going to learn how to do form validation of each of the input controls. We're going to learn how to mark form fields as in error and we're going to learn several advanced options for using ng model, including one-way binding and bidirectional binding. This is coming right up in the next few lessons.